Well, hey there, Buttercup. I'm Sandy Alnock, and I have a quick video for you today with some super loose painting. I'm using Honey Bee's stamp set that has a couple different sentiments that go with the Buttercup word, of course. And I've stamped them with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink onto some cold press watercolor paper. And I'm taking my Daniel Smith watercolors. You can probably do this with any watercolors. This technique is so simple, it really doesn't matter. I showed you before how to wet the whole paper and do this, but you can also just start putting colors on. I'm going to fill the whole thing mostly with paint. And I shouldn't say full, fill mostly. I'm either filling it or I'm not filling it. Yeah, Sandy, put your words together in the right order. <laughs> Anyway, I wanted to do a full background on this one. I did one recently with poppies and I only let the color spill out of the poppies a little bit. And I know some people got scared by that because they didn't know how far to go and how much splooging to do. So here I'm just splooging a lot. I put yellow in that swash around the flowers and I let a lot of water sit in there so that I have a lot of lightness and the green doesn't push in too far. Now, if your green starts to crawl in that direction, then put some water in the flowers and just let that water bleed out into the green or throw some yellow in, you know, something light that's gonna push back the green. And you can dab some off as well if you've got a paper towel or something and you need to remove some color, but keep the green to the outside. Keep a swoosh of that yellow and very, very light color. And then I just started playing. And I know everybody always wants exactly which colors, how much of a mixture, whatever. Look, I'm just playing. I'm just getting paint on my brush. I'm gonna flick. You can just do all kinds of things with the background and allow the area where those flowers are to remain nice and light though, because that's gonna be important for the rest of the card. I also have it stamped so that I have my flowers right along the word buttercup. And I wasn't sure what I was going to do at the bottom. I was originally thinking I might put a big, big bow down there or something, big ribbon, and ended up not doing that, as you saw in the preview of the card. Be careful about things like this where the paint is spilling over the edge. If you have your paper that's either taped down or anything, a lot of times the, the paint will congeal around the outside edges and you get like a weird edge. But if you're going to trim it down, then that doesn't work, matter anyway. What I always do is cut my paper a little bigger than I plan to have it on the card, and then I can just chop off those little bits. So now I'm gonna throw in a little bit of green and even lighten it a bit with a baby wipe to pull out some color. Put a little bit of color in my stems. And I particularly like the way I stamped this one flower here coming off of the bee. I've just masked off that the part of the bee so that the flower's kind of coming out of the word buttercup. And now I'm just going to throw a little bit, bit of color into the flowers. It doesn't have to be even. You don't have to worry about the shading. Does not really matter. And I'm using some yellow, uh, lemon yellow in combination with some permanent yellow deep, just to add a little fun and interest to it. But you can use any yellow you want because they're yellow buttercup flowers. So just have some relaxing fun and let the paint move around and let it do what it wants. When you've got this nice dry paper, you can do hard edges and soft edges. You can spray it some more. If you're getting too much hard edges, you can dab, just have fun with it. But the background, the fact that there's just this crazy wild background full of color means you've got lots of room to play. It doesn't matter a whole lot if everything's perfect, if your painting is exactly inside the lines or not. Now I'm using my number eight brush here. You can use your number 12 for the background and then switch to your number eight for the flowers themselves. And both of them will work with doing the splattering. And what I just do is tap it on my finger, as you can see, I just fill the brush with as much paint as the brush will hold. And then I can just tap it and make sure there is no project off screen when you're doing this. Cause I have some projects that now have yellow blobs on them and green blobs cause I, yeah, made a little mess. There you go. But I, there's no science to watercolor. There's just fun. So have some fun with it. And I'm just kind of playing around here. Now the trimming I did because I wasn't really happy with that whole tall card. So I made a square card out of it, mounted it with some dimensional adhesive onto a green card base. 
And then on the flowers themselves, I just put some glossy accents. And that allowed them to be kind of shimmery, shiny, as well as highlighting the color that's on there. And if you have any weird painting underneath it there, sometimes the glossy accents even just disguises it. So how easy of a card was that, right? No need to stress yourself out. Just make a beautiful, simple watercolor card and then send it to somebody. Don't sit on it. Send it to another person. If you don't have anybody to send it to, send it to me. I love getting your cards. My address is on my contact page, but send your cards to somebody because people need to see your beautiful work. And that's about it I have for you today. I told you it was a quick video. I will see you again next time. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.